it's it's not lost on us that many women are in the, the jobs that we have. And it's something I don't bring up a lot because I want your work to shine, but and I want it to be highlighted. But being a woman in this industry has its own bumps in the road, its own trials. And there are but there are so many positives also. And I think about me, you and Danny's, of course, our group chat that saves my life every, every day. day, every single day. But, you know, I guess the, the easiest way I can ask this is what's so special about being a woman in baseball, specifically working in this industry? We have access that people will never, ever have, period. It, I, I don't care how nice of a guy you are. It does not. It's just a biological understanding between the two that we have an ability to emote on a different level. And I think that's a very special thing to to realize and, and to take advantage of and to hone. And um, I've, I've had players come up to me in the past that have said, you know, I know at some point you're going to want to talk about my, my swing adjustment or my numbers and stuff like that. But it's also nice knowing that the first thing, and this was something that Chirinos would remind me a lot of last year, is you start with good morning or good afternoon and you ask how their family's doing or you ask how they're doing or you mention – you give them a human piece for a moment because they're not these numerical transactions mm -hmm. that they would appear to be on paper. Um, and I think there's a level of knowing that they can sit down with you. And, and I'm not saying this is just across the board. You have to cultivate trust. You have to cultivate yeah. that respect between them, but they also know that there's going to be a little more of that human capacity there. And, and that's exactly why I sat down with James McCann yesterday. We had, no discussion prior to it. It was a live interview and just getting a truly honest answer from him about the human element of the clubhouse and why it's so special where I know a lot of people, you know, let's talk about your numbers and let's dive into this and why you're doing this and blah, 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 blah. I, I think we're at a really special point right now where we're the peak of the late nineties, early two thousands of really just making them black and white numbers on paper to getting back into that human element and empathizing a little more and, and showing people why, because it's not relatable to hit 350 and make $5 million. Fans don't get that, especially in today's economy, when you're dealing with inflation and everything else, mm -hmm. that's where you can have that disconnect. But you remind them, these guys have struggles. You know, they bleed the same way we do. They've been through life events that have shaped them. Um, and I think when you find that, that ability to have common ground, that's where you hear fans rooting for these athletes because there's something in them that they recognize or they appreciate and they want to emulate. And, you know, it's interesting because as women, we have to depend on those numbers in a certain way. You and I don't have the same resume as Ben McDonald. We don't have the same resume oh as Dallas. Yeah, that's Dallas Braden. So I can't sit there and say I completely understand what you're talking about in the form as it pertains to playing. Our resumes will forever be different. I will never step foot on a major league baseball field as a player, period, no matter what I do. So we have to depend on some of those numbers. But we also, like you said, have to find the human element. Was it easy for you to find that balance? Or what was the challenge there? Because obviously, when you get started in play by play, you the numbers are important, but you have to tell the story of what's going on on the field and still get a quote or two and find out about their families and find out about their background, find out what college they went to, didn't go to their draft selection. It's a lot to balance. Was that easy for you or did you find a rhythm or what was that trans uh, transition like? Yeah, I've, I've always been the, the human side of things. I think that started when I was in high school. And ironically enough, I get that from my dad, just being wired in, in a heart first. I think that's everybody's one or the other, you know, you're either logically wired or you're emotionally wired. And that was it for me. And I always wanted to understand what they were going through and what they were feeling in that moment more than anything else. I understood the rules, but you know, what's behind the person who's making those plays ultimately happen. And it just kind of grew throughout my time. And I think some of that is because I started as a writer and you know, this, it gives you a little more space to freely put that out there and to put it into words and, and for as many words as you want about why somebody is the way they are. Um, I haven't written in a long time, but I remember my last piece being on Ian Happ and he was kind of this question mark for fans of he never smiles and you know, what, why is this guy the way he is and getting to lay that out 
is special. Um, and again, something that I don't take that trust lightly at all, that they're letting me kind of tell their own story, even though today we always used to say, well, athletes don't really have platforms and we're giving that to them with social media. Now they do have those platforms. So it's finding a way to continue to evolve that and to do them a service at the end of the day, we're here to serve them. But as I worked my way through, that was always at the forefront was the human element telling those stories. Now it is learning the numbers and it is learning the mechanics and what does this certain adjustment mean? What is the you know relay effect of when you change this one thing, how does that change the rest of it? What's the bigger picture? Um, and I've just tried to be honest with people and, and, you know, I don't want to come off as pretentious or pretending I know something when I don't. And I've had really, really good guys in the game who have been so kind to just break it down for me without any kind of patronization or, you know, rudeness about it. And I just said, look, I don't know. And I'm trying to learn. I know I can't feel a ground, but feel the ground ball. I'll never be able to do that. Um, mm -hmm. we never need to see the footage of me hitting in the home run derby in London because it's yes, like, I do. Yes, I do. it's the worst thing to ever exist. No, <laughs> just, you can text Andrew. He almost left me about it. It's fine. Four <laughs> years down the drain because I can't swing a bat. Um, but you know, I just, I just kind of, you walk up and, and Chris Young last year was one of the best analysts I could have ever had because you hear glove side, arm side a lot. Oh, he's missing a lot on his glove side or he's really heavy on his arm side today. And I said, you know, I just, I need you to break this down for me for a minute because I'm just having trouble making sure I fully understand it. And I never want to use a term incorrectly, right. um, especially on air and just having that ability. You know, Ben McDonald the other day, I said, I'm having a brain fart right now. Reverse splits. Is that left on left or left on right? Like, is right. it opposite or same side? And he he took no issue with it because I'm just laying my cards on the table saying, Hey, I'm having a day, you know, walk, walk me through a term real quick so that I make sure I understand what's going on. And some people say, you know, oh, that's so stupid. And how did she get into the big leagues? If she doesn't understand this, you have to grow from some point. And, and I just don't think lying or pretending about it and then getting it wrong. And then fans are now miseducated is the way to do it. You have to have, an ounce of humility going, you know what? I'm waking up stupid today, but I'll be a little smarter by the time I go to bed. Yeah. And and here's the thing we're, we have to do right by them too. So if we don't double up on the question, we're both screwed, but you know, who was always yeah. amazing about it. I know you're going to have my back on this is, is pitcher Cole Irvin. He um, is not only a wonderful human being, but he's engaged to Kristen, who is a broadcaster, reporter for NBC sports. And I remember the last day of last season, of course, this is before he was traded. I pulled him aside and I just said, thank you. You know, cause I like, he would use a lot of these terms that weren't just baseball slang, but the way he was describing some of his pitches that were working and weren't, I said, what do you mean by this? And what do you mean by that? And he would just break it down for me without skipping a beat, without making me feel yeah. stupid. And, and he knew that not only did I need to do right by him when I go on the broadcast and talk about him, but he said, my fiance goes to the same thing. Like she knows the questions that you have to ask and you want to be correct about things. You want to make sure you're not just going on the broadcast. And my broadcasters correct me all the time too. So we're so thankful for them because just yeah. like you said, I'm not, I don't want to make this about myself, sorry, but I, I can just relate on that level and to know that we have just as many questions to make ourselves better, to make them look better is fantastic. So it's, exactly. it's so important. 